Hello and welcome to curl 8.6.0. This is January 31, 2024. I'm here to talk to you about this new release. Um, let's just dive in. So this is um, me. I'm Daniel. I, uh, this is my workplace. I work for Worlds SSL. Uh, this is my uh, Mastodon account. You can find all my stuff on my website. Today I'm going to try to do the presentation in the same style uh, as always, right? Start with some numbers of, of about the release cycle and, and curl in general. Something about the security stuff that we announced today. S uh, we have seven changes in this release cycle to talk about. Some of my favorite bug fixes. I think I have 21 of them to mention today out of the 150 something. I'm just going to again uh, reiterate about things we're going to remove in the future and then mention a few things that we're planning hoping maybe we will add do next in the project so this is release 254 and as some people uh, like to say here the yes the 8-bit counter is soon going to be uh, you know filled up because um, 8 bits is maximum 255 and this time around we had uh, help from 65 contributors who have uh, helped out with you know bug reports patches whatever and out of these 65 40 uh, were new so we have a lot of people helping out and out of those 65 36 people authored commits that we have merged into the code in this cycle 18 of those uh, commit authors are new 1237 commit authors in total so far uh, i also just just as a side uh, note that i noticed that exactly two years ago we hit the 1000 commit authors counter so 237 new commit authors in exactly two years pretty cool so this time around we ha had a complete release cycle that is an eight week uh, cycle 56 days since the previous release which makes the total counter to 9448 days since curl was created and today i want to talk to you about a security advisory one security fix that we um, published today and i just want to reiterate and emphasize that if you read about uh, curl CVEs on other places like NVD, you will see that they will have a completely different opinion about our CVEs and vulnerabilities. Usually they think uh, the sky is falling just about in every case. So in this case is in particular um, not really a horrible problem. We graded it uh, we grade this as a severity low problem we call it cve 2024 0853 ocsp verification bypass with tls session reuse and what does this mean it's a, it's a fancy uh, way of saying so the text here on the screen actually says it but if you would do ocsp stapling that's the sort of the common phrase for for the TLS <laughs> feature that is called verify status it basically asks the server to provide a proof that the certificate is sort of valid still up to, uh, up to date with um, and if you if you don't check the if you then use this OCSP stapling um, and that f uh, check fails curl would still save the TLS session ID in its session ID cache so if you would do another request to the same host or, or, or try to do another um, request uh, another transfer to the same host curl would then reuse that session ID even though the test failed in the previous transfer and thanks to it reusing the session ID it would succeed with the following um, connect uh, attempt and continue on even though it actually failed in the previous one because it couldn't verify the status it's, and it, this only happens on curl that is using OpenSSL and it is only use, uh, happening if you're using TLS 1.2 and not TLS uh, 1.3 
So there are a lot of you know ifs and buts and only when, but if you if that happens, curl would then still connect and use a transfer to a host that obviously it shouldn't because it failed the verify status check, so it, it shouldn't be trusted. Hiroki Kurosawa found this, and it's a it's it's a bug, a flaw that we introduced in 8.5.0. So in only it only exists in that single release, and it didn't exist before, and it doesn't exist now anymore. And of course, it it exists because of uh, um, in 8.5.0, I actually fixed a bug about doing uh, verify status on on. Um, when you're reusing a connection, you shouldn't do verify status again because it can't do that. So a b b b. Anyway, Hiroki found this, reported it, and he's going to get rewarded with five hundred dollars for it. Thank you. <coughs> going forward, we also have a few uh, new things uh, in this release. Uh, we're counting about seven new things. First, uh, I've blogged about this separately, we are switching a lot of our uh, documentation formatting from various kinds of NROF and custom formats into more Markdown or Markdown-like. It looks like Markdown is not fully Markdown, but let's not get into those details. So more of our documentation for uh, writing libcurl man pages and, and the um, man the sections for the regular curl man page they're all now written in a markdown like format which makes it easier to read easier to write just generally nicer format to do things so i hope this will help us do better and more documentation in an easier way going forward we're introducing a new error code and why does it matter uh, for most people it doesn't matter uh, so now libcurl can return curl e too large this is mostly Im interesting for those cases where it <coughs> where it builds stuff internally and it has an internal limit so to prevent things from blowing up uh, out of proportion. And you previously it would return out of memory for these kind of errors, uh, and that was misleading and um, hard for people to understand what happened. Why does it return out of memory? It's uh, obviously not out of memory, and now it returns too large instead, which is not a whole lot better because it's still, what does it mean? But still, yeah. We introduce a new curl info timer um, option here. It's a way for applications to ask a transfer how long it was, um, it's how long it sat in a queue before the transfer started. So when you, when you do a transfer with libcurl, you can say, <coughs> Well, you can pretty much you can limit the number of, for example, how many connections you're allowing it to use, how many connections to a single host name you allow it to use. So if you do more than that, it, um, libcurl will queue up the transfer internally until the transfer can actually start. And now, you this is a new way for for applications to ask curl then how long was it actually in the queue before it started. It helps applications just to get better timing information. What happens? Why did it take so long? Or why didn't it take so long? Understand what happened in, in a transfer. Another tiny, tiny little thing is that we added a new option called curl opt server response timeout MS, which is just a millisecond version of the already existing option. The curl opt server response timeout has existed for decades but it was uh, full integer seconds. Now you can specify this in milliseconds as well. We have that uh, for many other options. When well, That's why we have the millisecond alternative. It should probably always just have been the millisecond version. I don't, but anyway, now you have the millisecond version. This is an interesting thing for all users of curl on Windows. And it says here, Windows 8 or, or later, which should be pretty much all uh, curl users on Windows. I hope, I hope you, and we're not, we don't have that many users on earlier Windows versions. <coughs> but anyway, if you are on Windows 8 or later and you run curl, curl will now no longer actually 
start um, sub-threads to do name resolving, it will use this new way of doing uh, name resolving called uh, with this function called the get other info xw. It's a weird name, but it's a asynchronous call to do name resolving without starting new threads. And why does it, why does that matter? Well, maybe it doesn't matter, but ideally, hopefully, it's it'll be uh, it'll use a little bit less resources, fewer um, th fewer threads, and then less memory. Ideally, hopefully. Otherwise, there should actually not be any behavioral difference. You shouldn't really notice. We have changed how we detect libpsl in configure. So now you really have to either exp tell configure to not use libpsl or you have to make sure that, it act so that the detection works. So you have to make a decision. Use it or don't use it. Previously, it would sort of try to find it, but ignore it if it didn't find it. But we, we learned that a lot of people did not really understand the significance and the importance of libpsl if you're using cookies. So if you're using cookies, HTTP cookies, you really want a libpsl in your curl. Or make an active decision that you don't, but then you actually, then you did that decision. And then that decision is on you. I added this little thing that I guess this is a change that most people will not care about, but it was cool for me because I made run tests the script that actually invokes test cases in curl, support a new option called dash gl. It's a, the, it's a version of the dash g option. It is for debugging, running curl to debug um, with the debugger using the LLDB debugger on Mac mostly. Um, when uh, debugging individual test cases. Help me debug test cases, so I figured I will, would uh, tell the world about it, because it's, for me, it's an it's a easy way to figure out how things go sideways on Mac. <coughs> so I, we actually did 154 bug fixes in this release, even though it says 152 on this particular screen, but that's just because um, that's me. So some of the bug fixes we did this release, I, I, I want to talk about. Uh, if you want to read the full list, you of course go to the changelog on the website because it'll list them all and link to the issues and pull requests for them. Um, <coughs> some of the bug fixes then. Let's start out with that we fixed. So since you know we have HTTP3 support, uh, it's not experimental anymore since the previous version, uh, previous release. And now you can make sure that you can uh, build with NGTCP2 using boring SSL properly uh, from configure. Previously it wouldn't really detect that correctly. It would only detect uh, the quick TLS thing automatically. You could also, by more or less accident, try to build curl to use quick, but use it, but and, but tell configure to use a TLS library that didn't support quick. So you got a weird combo that then just failed the, ta um, the build, and now configure will properly try to detect that the TLS library you have chosen to build with, if you enable quick, verify that the TLS library actually supports quick. Otherwise, it'll tell you already when you run configure. Just, you know, in an attempt to detect problems earlier so that you can uh, address that already in your configure line instead of realizing much later when you've already built stuff and you don't understand why things break. <coughs> I did um, some, if I may say it myself, rather cool work. And now we actually extract. So all, mil all libcurl man pages, they are one. 490 of them or something, almost 500 of them. They all have example sections um, showing how to use the particular function or option. And now we have a CI job that actually extracts all those examples and run them through a compiler to verify that they all actually compile uh, error free, which I think is a pretty cool thing. And it really made sure, it really makes sure that our examples are actually not necessarily entirely correct because 
they can because I can't test run them right so I don't know that they're actually doing exactly what we're they're supposed to do but they're actually <laughs> at least they're compiling so we could fix a lot of typos and and just weird mistakes that shouldn't be there so um, all the libcurl examples should be much better now at least in when you run curl the command line and you do you know curl uh, dash capital V to get the a version information. It will show you which protocols it supports, which features, and then, you know, version numbers of subcomponents and stuff. Uh, and starting now, it will claim and uh, list the IPFS and IPNS schemes as supported. Uh, I call them protocols here in, in within quotes because they're not, they're more like URL schemes. But anyway, <coughs> it will list them because it understands them. If um, and you can use those IPFS and IPNS uh, schemes if you provide an IPFS gateway to use. Uh, I rewrote the curl tool command line parser really, so now it uh, finds the options much faster than previously. Uh, pretty much, uh, I don't remember exactly how I got into it, but I, I realized that the the way curl would find command line options in the code wasn't really effective and it's so i realized that i could do it much faster and better <coughs> fast forward i changed a lot of internal code to to do this but it's now i think more than a magnitude faster on finding command line options i realized that for most people it, it won't matter because uh, you know what's the millisecond or two for most command line invokes but if you're using a lot of command line options maybe and most importantly it was just stupid to take longer time than uh, we need to and besides i think this new way of, of parsing command line options uh, <coughs> is also much easier to read and easy, easier to modify code so i think in general much more sort of a nicer solution for command line option parsing <coughs> and and one of these things that we just seem to um, support a weird format for dash dash cookie, which we don't anymore. It was never documented, never tested. Uh, ignore that. Uh, we noticed that you can actually, you could actually, uh, you can do, if you would use this option, remove dash dash remove on error. And if you would use that on a file that wasn't a normal file, if you, for example, write the output to a character device or a you know named pipe on on linux unix stuff and if if we would you would get an error curl could actually try to remove that character device or um, named pipe which in most cases doesn't matter but because in most cases you won't have the access rights to remove the character device right but if you would for example you surely you'd never do that but if someone would then use curl as root and you would write the output to a character device it, an error would happen and you would use this curl would then remove that character device which i'm pretty sure no one actually ever intended or wanted it to do but now it doesn't now it actually verifies that what it tries to remove needs to be uh, a quote-unquote regular file yeah dev is one of those standard things that people are using to you know sometimes direct the output to when you don't care about output you just want to verify some things and I, we stopped setting the file comment on amiga i realized this is a really niche thing because uh, the number of users using amiga is uh, not overwhelming <coughs> let's move on we have this is an ongoing work and, and you will see more about this going forward, but we have reduced the use of the download buffer all over. And uh, why do you care? You typically don't care. But the idea here is that we have uh, had a lot of code sort of more or less abusing the, the download buffer in a, a lot of different places in the code just because it needed we needed buffers uh, and it was a buffer that existed going forward we m we should be able to uh, in more ways reduce how we use the download buffer and ideally going forward use much um, we can use one download buffer no matter how many downloads we're doing for example so that we should going forward be able to 
drastically reduced in, uh, the amount of memory we use to download stuff when we do a lot of parallel transfers. I will talk more about that when it happens because that part hasn't really happened. But uh, I'm mentioning this because we have then done a lot of internal refactorings to make sure that we don't use the shared download buffer, we use private buffers for different things when we need buffers. So a lot of different uh, small fiddly changes all over to fix this. And other fiddly changes we've done all over that we've reduced the number of, for example, the pattern malloc and mem copy, and we're using the memdup zero function internally in a lot of places. And in a lot of other places we also fixed from using malloc and realloc over to the dyn buff, the dynamic buffer system that we have internally. Uh, all of these, uh, in particular these two latter ones, are, are um, efforts to just reduce the amount of malloc and, and the dynamic memory management things that we're doing internally and switching to generic functions, tested generic functions that will sort of help us ideally hopefully reduce mistakes and make things a little bit easier usually it also actually becomes more efficient and uh, easier to read code so usually better with so when you use a i call it modern c ARS, if you build curl to use c ARS for for name resolving which a lot of users do is so the default way to do name resolves in curl is not using c ARS. so the default build is using a threaded resolver but if you're using c ARS, we're now <coughs> no longer setting our own custom timeout for individual name results and we're using CARIS uh, internal default because they have now a shorter default and it's using it supports getting the timeout actually from the system a resolver config files sort of just better timeouts with CARIS. We fixed a mistake in the headers API that sometimes in particular for blank headers, it would store the trailing new line as part of the content, which is contrary to how it is documented and uh, expected to work. Just a heads up if you're using the headers API. Um, I, I did a pretty big overhaul and, and cleanup and, and, and performance fix of the internal printf implementation in curl. So we have an internal printf implementation in curl right uh, why do you do that we have that as um, it is there to make sure originally i we added it to make sure that we have an sn print implementation everywhere because back in the late 1990s that wasn't necessarily the truth so a lot of systems didn't have sn print so that makes it made it really hard to do proper print operations because uh, you know the um, it was risky without a proper buffer uh, protection. So that's how it started and since then we have kept it because uh, we also added it to the API so it's also available to to applications. That was not very clever but anyway it's in there it's in API and nowadays there's also a way to make sure that it actually works identically on all platforms no matter um, what kind of support or how the different implementations print a family actually work. Anyway so we have that and I, uh, I um, fixed a few bugs that made the internal printf version and then th that is the one that we provide in, in the API. It didn't really work exactly as POSIX say and, uh, says and it didn't work exactly like the glibc version in some, especially when you did invalid you know percent codes and this number and the dollar sign operation. So I fixed a few bugs and I also made it much faster and in particular for common constructs like we do, you know, percent %d, percent %s, the normal things that we do in a lot of places in curl code, for example. <coughs> the, the new code is maybe around 30% faster. <coughs> so pretty good, I think. And uh, more things, uh, uh, changing to DIN buff things. So I, I rewrote, fixed the port parsing for FTP without doing allocations because it's just stupid and inefficient. Stefan introduced support for the new OpenSSL 3.2 quick stack. This is exp label experimental, but if you want to 
start playing with quick and HTTP3 using OpenSSL. Uh, this is the way to go. They support this in, I mean, it's not in beta from OpenSSL uh, from their standpoint. So they have released this quick stack already. It's in their 3.2 release. So now you can build curl to use that. You still need a NGHP3 also to use it. We still call this experimental because it's it doesn't work as good as we want. So we are working with OpenSSL team to ideally fix bugs and, and polish this and improve it going forward. So uh, it's a work in progress. If you would disable the host header and you would uh, on the command line or with the API and you would use host with the just the wrong casing, it would not disable the host header. It was just a stupid mistake. So it did, it did the check case sensitively instead of insensitively fixed. <coughs> If if a server for some reason would um, return a 101 uh, HTTP 101 response code that and claim that it was as another version than HTTP 1.1, we would still accept it somehow, and it would cause internal confusion. Now it will just return an error because a 101 response um, needs to be 1.1. We fixed two problems with open LDAP. One of just a weird LDAP crash if you didn't use TLS. And then another crash that happened if you do did regular LDAP and used the start TLS option to switch to TLS. Both of them signs of us not having enough users doing LDAP and not enough tests for LDAP. So if you're an LDAP user with curl, we could use your help. Though those were some of my, uh, you know, bug fixes I wanted to highlight at least. There are many more. You go read up about them. So we have a few pending removals. These are the same ones I've talked about before. <coughs> we are going to remove NTLMWB support in June. This is in fact a sort of a, just a particular flavor of NTLM that basically nobody's using. We noticed that the support is already broken. So if you try to enable it in the build, it will actually fail. There is a patch that you can apply to make it work again. So it's already there as a sort of a sign that as long as no one complains about that, we know that hardly anyone is using it because it actually doesn't work already. So um, it's there as a sort of a blocker to make sure to remind people and make them aware of this state that this is this is stuff that is going away anyway so maybe if you run into this problem you should not use it anyway and of course then later we will also su le reduce support for space separated node proxy patterns uh, and they will you will need to do the node proxy patterns with a comma separation just to make sure that we follow the style of everyone else pretty much we're going to do the next release is likely to become 8.7.0 I'm saying um, which I I hope this is true um, I've also talked to to my friends uh, <laughs> my curl friends here and we have changed a lot of things in this release you know I mentioned a lot of malloc and copy and print f fixes and we've changed uh, lots of refactors in in the even in the transfer sort of core code stuff as well. So there's also, I would say, an, there's a risk that we have done something that will trigger a, a bug or two that might make us do a patch release sooner than 8.7.0. And in that case, we do an 8.6.1 and 8.6.2, but who knows? Uh, that is still in the future. So maybe the next one will be 8.7.0. Then some of the things that we are planning, working on, possibly doing next. I mean, these are just things that we are, uh, you know, we have PRs and we have work, work on this ongoing. So ECH is one of those. Ideally, hopefully, we will see a merge of, of this, uh, at least the first attempts on this encrypted client hello it's a way to do 
to encrypt the SNI field, for example, in the TLS handshake, to uh, to uh, not leak to listeners who you're targeting the host name of the target TLS connection. So that is uh, ideally coming. So we have I talked I mentioned that briefly the unified download buffer. Ideally, hopefully, we can do an unlimited number of parallel transfers using a single download buffer, which for for people who are doing a lot of parallel transfers, this will be a significant uh, memory use eff efficiency boost, right? Since nowadays uh, you would typically use, I don't know, 100k per transfer for a download buffer. So if you would do you know, 100 parallel transfers, that's 100 times 100k. So switching to just a single 100k for all of those 100 transfers, that's a pretty significant um, thing, I think. It'll also simplify things internally because we don't need that anymore. <coughs> We're working on uh, adding support for uh, negative DNS caching, meaning that if if the DNS lookup fails, we store that failure for a while in the cache saying, so if we look up the same name again immediately, we don't need to take the time to do the um, resol <laughs> resolver fail again because we know that it fails failed just recently. The idea is also that we're going to use a uh, half the DNS cache timeout for, for the negative DNS entry, so 30 seconds uh, by default. That's the plan, we're working on it. Uh, the testing of this has turned out to be a little bit of an interesting challenge. We're going to do uh, dough tracing um, added. So basically, if you're do doing dough, the DNS over HTTPS, we're adding a keyword to, to the curl global trace option to make sure that you can add get more data from the trace uh, you can get more tracing from the dough transfer using that mechanism sort of adding more in in the concept of or, or tradition of adding more stuff to, to to trace better in curl so if help you understand better what's going on underneath under the hood we have this new info option coming if you're using if you're an application you and you and you're using Potentially, you're using a proxy on and off, right? If you specify a proxy and you set a no proxy filter, like I'm not using a proxy for these particular hosts, and then you pass in a URL, afterwards you wanted to know, did this transfer use a proxy or not? Because you had a no proxy filter and you had a proxy specified, did the connection go through the proxy or not? This just basically returns, it used a proxy, didn't use a proxy. because. Uh, as it is right now, it's a little bit complicated for an application to actually know if it if it filtered it uh, through the no proxy or not. So those are five things we possibly, I mean, I'd say possibly because I can't tell how things will actually work out, but ideally we will merge these things and they will be part of the next release. And you of course, listener of this, you can help out. And I'm sure that there will be other things as well that we haven't thought about, we haven't seen yet because people work on stuff and they just show up. So there will be other stuff as well. Th uh, that's fun. And if we stick to all of this and, and the release cycle works out the way we plan and hope, the next release is going to happen on March 27. That is exactly eight weeks from now. And that is the release cycle, right? All the pending coming release notes, the work in progress stuff is showing up on this page automatically over time. So if you're ever interested in what's coming next in curl, this is the URL for you. It'll always update, um, well, every few days at least with the, with the latest. And again, we have this release cycle. This is, today is release Wednesday. That's the over there on the right sides and after this release day, uh, we have a 10 days cool down period. So basically this is a period just to verify that the release is fine. We don't do any breaking changes. We merge bug fixes. And it's a time to ponder about doing a second uh, patch update in case there's any alarming bugs that someone finds or experiences or, you know, the sky is falling. We should really not allow people to um, 
suffer through these bugs so we should do a patch release and if um, if we don't or even if we don't really in, in most cases when these 10 days are up it's a Saturday and then we go into the feature window and in the feature window 21 days three weeks we allow features changes to get merged into the code base basically things that are reason for us to bump the minor uh, version number and then after three weeks of that there's another saturday and we close the feature window and we just merge bug fixes for 25 days until it's release wednesday again and then we release and in this case the next release uh, is march 27 and then um of course this uh, um, we have this 10-day cooldown period until uh, February 10th. That is, I mean, that is in 10, day, in 10 days, right? So when we open the feed, uh, we, clo we, we close the feature window. We, we go into feature freeze on March the 2nd so that we will be ready to do the release on March 27. Yeah, those dates that got a little bit wrong, I guess. Today is January 31. <coughs> So, you know, that's the eternal, just uh, normal curl release cycle, as every cycle. And if you need any help, uh, assistance or whatever with curl, uh, you know who to contact. We do curl support for customers um, every day. And if you suspect uh, or found uh, have found any bugs, you go to our GitHub page github.com slash curl slash curl and the, the issues page there and, and submit tell us all about it and we will work on it we usually pretty quick at, at uh, fixing addressing um, bugs and if you suspect a security problem you don't go to the uh, issue page and you instead go to hackerone.com slash curl and you add all the details there and of course if we confirm and agree that it is a security problem we administrate and, and we will offer you a monetary reward. <coughs> I think we say that it's up to almost 10k USD if you would find a critical error, which uh, admittedly is hard. No one has ever found a critical error in curl since we started the bug bounty. So it's a little bit of a challenge for you, but what's uh, who doesn't like a challenge? So tell us about it. Of course, all this is possible, much thanks to these fine sponsors. Uh, the top ones in the slightly bigger names uh, are the more the, the golden and the, uh, main sponsors and the silver sponsors are the smaller ones listed below. But uh, thanks to these guys, we have money to pay for infrastructure and, and uh, some development as well. So yeah, this was is curl 8.6.0 um, and yeah this is pretty much what i wanted to talk to you about today you you should of course again join the um, mailing list join the github issues uh, submit your pull requests we're here to make curl even better for the next round and uh, until then have a good day bye